Let us now look at the slopes and slope processes and look at what happens along slope processes. A lot of these processes and movements occur because of gravity. But before we can do that, let's look at slopes and what are the origins of slopes. Slopes can be endogenic, that is produced by folding or faulting, or they can be exogenic, produced as a result of erosion and weathering. And what are the forces that play here? Gravity plays a role in two ways, slides and sticks. So can you see the frictional force goes in the opposite direction because it pulls it, stick force keeping it there, and then the slide component. So how does gravity move the material down? It loosens the material and the material slides down the slope. And so can you see then what causes slope processes? It's gravity, the slope angle, the water contents. These are important factors in determining the movement on slopes. And when the particles become detached from the parent material, and then what happens? They move and the process could either be falling, rolling, bouncing. And so when they get to a point where it's flat, then they come to rest. Here we see an example of what happened in 19, uh, 2005, where it was triggered first of all by heavy rainfall. So you see the slope became super saturated and then it moves down the slope. And when we look at the slope, we can see that there were different periods of time where slumping occurred, where the slopes then got weakened. And these happened on three occasions, 35,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, in 1995, and then again in 2005. Now this chart shows you the types of landslides that we can get. And we're going to look at these landslides in greater detail as we move forward. But uh, here we see the processes that are happening. And now let, let's look at this video to show you how these happen in an animation so that you can see exactly how the processes take place. Let's look at how these features form. And so you can see there there's a sliding, a slumping, and uh, this is how mass wasting then occurs. Now that you've looked at that, let's look at the different kinds of landslides. So we get rotational and translational landslides. Let's look at the rotational landslide. It's a downward movement. So can you see in the animation now, it slumps down and then pushes forward. And so therefore this is what happens and it produces then this concave movement. So it's a sinking and then pushing forward as that material then has to make a way for the, for the, the increased material that it has to push its way forward. Then we get translational landslides. These are on top of a ground where it then loses its contact with the parent material. And can you see what now happens? It slides down the slope. So it can either break off or a block and slide down the slope in that way. So that's a translational, translational landslide. Slopes usually do not fail for just one reason. Over long periods of time, gravity is always tugging at it. But really, it's water that can be the most important catalytic, catalytic agent because it weakens the slope. And so there are immediate and underlying causes. But the most common triggers, for example, earthquakes, because earthquakes are going to cause a sudden movement. Heavy rainfall occurs, it supersaturates the ground, and so therefore it loosens it, loosen, loosens it from its parent material. Thawing of the ground can happen where you get the frequent, especially in periglacial, uh, periglacial uh, uh, climates, where you get the, the ground freezing and thawing. And so this expansion and contraction then causes this movement of the material. So what are the external forces that affect the slope? It's the increase in slope angle, the removal of support low down at the slope. Like for example, when waves then underpin a cliff. And so by underpinning the cliff, the overhanging rock materials cannot be supported, so they fall down. Also adding a mass on the, on the slope by building up sediments. And so the, build, the sediment builds up at the top of the slope, it doesn't stick to the slope, and then that build of, of, of materials then creates a momentum and it slips down the slope. And also removal of vegetation, because what vegetation does is it binds the soil, keeping the soil together as the plants grow with their roots in the soil itself. Then we get internal forces. This is the weak material that is sitting on top of a failure surface. So if the material is not very weak, very weak, it's not properly consolidated, it will move. But in most cases, water is the key catalyst because what does water do? It creates this expansion. And then when it creates this expansion, it loosens the, the particles from the parent soil, a parent rock. And then the materials are being influenced by gravity. Also, there's a decreased cohesion. And this usually is associated with water. And then obviously the most violent one and the most immediate one would be earthquakes that simply shake the landscape. So here we see in illustration the different processes that occur. So can you see what happened there? There was a slumping of the material. As it slumped, it pushed forward. 
you can see the arrows on the side as it pushed forward. And so there was a number of slumps that occurred. And so you get this step, step like feature. And then all the loosened material, like for example, the mud that flows with it because the ground has been saturated, rushes forward to the front. And that's the toe of the uh, landslide itself. And so therefore that's what usually buries things and causes the most damage at the front of the landslide. Let's look at that rotational slip. Can you see in the animation now what happens? It slumps down and then moves forward. And so this is what happens when we get the slumping occurring. Pushing down and then pushing forward. Look at this example here. Can you see that was where the plane was? And then all of that just simply collapsed because the ground became saturated. And so therefore it lost its support and simply just slumped down. Look at this example here where the, the slope then is weakened because material then gets into the soil and then it loosens that material and all of that simply just rushes forward as a debris flow. Here we see an example of a block slide where uh, either an earthquake caused a, a, a breaking of the landscape, uh, loosening the landscape and now all the rocks, the soil and even the trees all rush forward almost like an avalanche. Uh, and this is what happens here when we get a block slide. And usually these, this massive movement would really be associated with some kind of earthquake or major geological process. When we look at debris avalanche, look at that material become super saturated and then it simply slides down the slope. And can you see when you look at the cross section there, you see it's the soil. The soil becomes saturated and because now maybe if the bedrock, especially the bedrock is impermeable, it doesn't allow the water to penetrate into the bedrock then it super saturates the soil and that is why the soil can rush down the slope like that. So the slides affect both resistant rock and unconsolidated material. And so what happens is this that if you have a slope and the material is not consolidated and it's not binding to the parent rock then what happens is this that it will slide down the slope and usually what happens is it slides down the slope and breaks down as it gets to the bottom. And so it usually occurs in weaker rock and uh, it, it distinguishes them. And when we can see what happens here is either a rotational movement along these slopes because the, the soil becomes saturated and then sinks down and then moves forward. Look at this example here. Can you see the ground becomes saturated? It becomes, uh, uh, it's, it's slump pushes down and then pushes forward. So there you get the rotational movement. And so you can see that the area of rotation is the area of fracture where the break occurred. Now, one of the most common forms of mass wasting is soil creep. And soil creep is a process that goes on continuously within the soil materials, the regolith. And it consists of fall, slides, slumps, which eventually uh, cause uh, the, the, the soil to move. Now, it can occur over very short periods of time. And can you see soil creep can occur on a slope that is about six degrees, uh, 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 as low as six degrees and then you can get this movement occurring. So it doesn't need a very steep angle. And what is the mechanism that is associated with soil creep? Can you see that it involves expansion and contraction of the soil? And this could either happen by drying and wetting. When the ground becomes saturated, it expands and it dries, it, it then contracts and then gets broken from the loose material. So let's illustrate that in this graphic here. So can you see there's the expansion when it's getting wet and drying out? And then that's the path of expansion. And then what happens, once it's now loosened from the parent material, what's going to happen? It's now going to be tugged on by gravity. And so therefore, as you see in the animation, now it's going to roll down the slope. And that's how soil creep then moves the material along. So it's a slow process, but it can happen along any slope. And let's look at the examples of this. So can you see there was the road? Now the road moved forward because the soil pushed against the road and cracked the road. And when you look at the rocks, in the cutout on the side, you see how they actually bend at the top because the soil is actually moving forward. Look at this example here. Can you see these little rolls or ridges within the soil? That's all as a result of soil creep. And you can see the slope is not very steep. And so what happens is this, that either they, when the soil gets loosened from its parent material, it will slide down that slope. And so it's influenced by gravity. Here we see another example of how the trees move forward. And look, our fence has been pushed all the way forward and it's now completely broken. The road cracks up because of soil creep. Now let's take a, a look at what it does in within a forest. Can you see there how the tree's growth pattern is changed? Because what happened is the roots moved forward in the soil. And so therefore the tree then, the growth was adjusted because of the movement of the, the soil where the roots were stuck into. Look at this example here where we see um, movement within a cutout. 
And can you see how at the top soil creep moves the fractured rock? And can you see it's faster near the surface? And so therefore the rock is not actually bent, but it's just that the movement is moving faster there. So we're not getting some kind of folding that's happening here. This is because the soil has moved forward so that fractured rock has actually been pushed forward. It hasn't been bent in any way by some tectonic force. Let's look at what happens here with that process. So the area we're highlighting now, can you see the particle then is loosened and then it will move. That's the mechanism of freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing, and then it moves down the slope. Now, as we, as is indicated, that it happens in periglacial environments where it experience permafrost. So it's not something we will see in South Africa, but it's definitely a process that happens. And can you see how the trees then get affected in the illustration here, that they tend to bend because they were growing in a particular direction, but now because the roots are moving forward as the soil moves forward, the trees then have that bend-like structure in their trunks. Here we see an example of mud flow. Now mud flow can happen quite fast. Can you see here it's about 80 kilometers an hour. And so what happens, the ground becomes super saturated and now then it slumps and pushes forward. And notice in the front here how we're getting the mud flow. So that's where it all flows in underneath as it moves out. And so this tells us then that the catalyst agent here would obviously have been heavy rainfall. Look at this example here where we spoke about where if you get damage done at the low angle of a slope. So if a slope is undercut, then the rocks overhanging have no support. And so there we get rocks falling. And so a rock a fall is a fragment of rock detaching from the sides, toppling, falling. And as they come along the side, they could bounce against each other. They could smash against each other and they could actually break apart. Now, remember when we looked at slopes, we spoke about the free face slope. This is where it will come from and it will come to rest on the Taylor slope. Here we're seeing an example of landslides or landslip. And so this can happen uh, uh, for various reasons. It could be that the soil becomes super saturated and this is what happens. It could also occur where we get earthquakes, but in the case of this example, it might have been that the ground became super saturated and then the soil just was loosened from its parent material and then rushed forward as a debris avalanche. So there we have all the processes that are associated with slopes and the processes that occur along the slopes. Now, these are not weathering processes or erosive processes. They're mass wasting processes because the uh, movement occurs because of gravity tugging against these slopes. And as we, we saw, the gravity can tug against them when a particle loses its stick and then it's going to slip down the slope.